Hey, hey, and welcome to day four of our five day workshop, how to be end of free. And today uh, it's going to be very important video because we are going to talk all about the healing mindset. And it's going to be a very honest video because uh, I notice from myself and from the girls which I working with that there is a lot of things going on and you have to know that because I want you to heal and you, you can't change change things you are not aware of. So hopefully this video makes you aware of a couple of things. So do you have it? Do you have what it takes? Do you have the good healing mindset? Uh, if you know what to do, but somehow you just don't bloody do it, that means that you lack of healing mindset. <laughs> What that means? That means that basically if you know everything already about anti-inflammatory diet, how to regulate your hormones, you know exactly what to eat, what to do, what not to do, but you just don't do it. That means that there is some things in your subconscious minds which is which are preventing you from doing it. And this is the big, big, big thing. You know how many girls got this problem? I had like for a very long, long, long time. And things that are influencing your mindset. I want to, uh, to talk to you about a few things and why it's this important. So first of all, it's not you. A lot of girls are associating with endometriosis to the point that they are describing themselves as endomelanie, for example. On uh, Instagram, there's many accounts like this. And if you are one of them, please change it because you are not endometriosis. You've got a name. Endo is something what just happened to you in this all, you know, life journey. But it doesn't define you by any shape or form. Don't take it, you know, as, as something what describes you. No, please don't do it. It's just temporary. It will come. You will learn what you're supposed to learn because every experience brings us some lessons. And then it's going to go away like it did with me. But it doesn't define you whatsoever. So first thing, it's not you. Okay. Second thing, I'm pointing in the wrong direction. It's not yours. You know, we giving mine description to something we love and we cherish and we hold very dearly in our heart. For example, you're not going to say the children or the husband, like the is, what is the? You're going to say my children, my husband, because it's something what is yours, something what you love, something what you cringe to it. And how many times did you say, oh, it's just my endometriosis? Why would you claim it at yours? Please don't do it. It's not yours. It's just something that happened, but this will go away. So it's not you and it's not yours. Okay. Very, very important. And then we've got the gains, what this illness is giving you. And you might think you'll have absolutely nothing, just pain and misery, but hear me out. We're going to talk about it later on. And the losses, what you're going to lose when you get 100% healthy. And this is so, so, so important to know. So the psychological portrait of the Ender Girl. <laughs> Working with my uh, Ender Girls 101 and living with endometriosis myself for 20 years, I came to conclusion that there is psychological profile of Ender Girl. And <laughs> let me know in the comment section below how many things you can tick and how many things are describing you. First of all, every girl, every endo girl is perfectionist. We are just literally perfectionist. If we can't have it perfect, we don't want to. We are control freaks. And that goes back to our childhood, which was very likely a kind of unstable and traumatic. So now we learn that we have to control things. That's why we've got such a big problem with endometriosis, because it just literally buzz us bounce us off this control, you know, wagon. We cannot control it anymore. Like we cannot control our body. That's why we are trying to push this control in some other um, ways in our life. You know, like, for example, we are doing a lot of exercises. You know, you know where you're trying to push this control over. But we are control freaks. Mm -hmm. And the people pleasers. Yes. 
Majority of M the girls put other people first, not us. No, 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 no. We do everything for other people. And we just literally neglect ourselves. And, you know, our body is whispering and our body is giving a signal. This endometriosis didn't happen overnight. You just didn't listen because you've been so busy pleasing others and putting others first instead of putting your health first. Does it sound familiar? You watch, it's going to be even more heavy. But there is also this. Majority of endo girls are forced to be too strong for too long. Can you relate to that? Like you, you've been carrying on and been so bloody strong, so strong for so many years. No one gave you break. Uh -uh. You know, uh, you have to be responsible and you, other people be coming to you. Sometimes it was you who was holding all family to get together. And that's why we cling to this illness because it gives us for the first time, sometimes ever, it gives us permission to be weak. And it gives us permission to put ourselves first and to rest. Uh-huh. Always putting other first. I already mentioned that. Yep. This is actually how our body is telling you, girl, no more. Now I make you sick. So you take time off and you put yourself first and you learn. You see, this illness is teaching you how to put yourself first. First, majority of endo girls have also one toxic parent or even both in extreme, <laughs> ex very extreme conditions. But one person, you know, from your family is a bloody toxic. And in my case, it was my mom who is absolutely narcissist. It's like, ugh, if you heard my story, like I ended up homeless even because I just ran away from home. So... I'm like literally the model example of the ender girl. <laughs> Very likely the eldest sister. Can you relate? Yes, and that's why we are control freak. And that's why we learn to put other people first because we're supposed to take care of our siblings or, or our family. In my case, it was both because my mom is like not capable of doing majority of uh, grow up uh, stuff. So I didn't have time to be a child. I had to just grow up very quickly. And then I took care of my sister. So here you go. The one who always gets shit done. This is, goes hand with hand with being pro, uh, a perfectionist. We always get shit done. You know, other people struggle with things, but they always come to us because we always get shit done. And there's always some kind of hidden abuse. And why is this very important? Hmm. There is actually uh, many, many, uh, many, many uh, researches done on endometriosis and childhood abuse. And I made a special video about it. I'm going to link it in the description so you can watch it and you can see like uh, which conclusion did they come up with. I'm not just going to talk it here because I spent already a lot of time on this video. <laughs> so I'm just going to link it down. But I want you to know it's not just made up stuff. Endo is associated with early childhood abuse. Seriously. And there are as consequences of this abuse, which you are carrying on to your adulthood. Lack of safety. Uh, and this is associated with uh, one toxic parent uh, or the fact that you had to uh, take too much responsibilities on your back and you didn't have time, you know, to feel safe. So lack of safety is big one, lack of personal space. If you are living with a parent who is toxic, like me with my mom, and you will be surprised if I tell you how many of my uh, clients actually had one toxic parent and lack of this personal space and how many of the ender girls uh, illness is going into remission right away when they move, when they reclaim back their personal space. Because sometimes this is the only way which prevents you from healing. I know a few of my clients, they've been doing everything, you know, a healing mindset, top notch. Uh, they've been following anti-inflammatory diets. They've been regulating their hormones and still was absolutely zero progress. 
And I'm like, and by the way, you're still living with your mom? And they were like, yeah, Yola. And when they moved, bang, everything changed. All of a sudden, everything changed because they feel safe. They've got the personal space and they were able to heal. You know, if sometimes when you're living with a toxic parent or this person who triggers and brings back this trauma, you cannot heal in, you know, a situation like this. Lack of self-love. And the girl, I'm going to repeat that twice today. You cannot heal the body you hate. Uh huh. And there is massive lack of self-love. We seeing our bodies as something would have to uh, perform the task. Like I used to say, like my body never cooperates. Like I've got the plans, but my body always stands in the way. I always like separate myself from this body because this is what trauma does. Trauma actually separates you from your body. So you dissociate yourself from the body. And notice this illness happened when you dissociated yourself from your body, when you stop paying attention to your body, when you've been too busy doing things. This is where this illness happened, okay? Lack of self-trust. Sometimes we just don't trust our body. And when I'm starting working with a client, uh, we are going through this uh, journaling uh, kind of um, brainstorming. And I'm asking them, uh, I'm not ready to heal because. And they give me 2,000 reasons why they think they are not ready to heal. And none of them. None of them is good enough reason, you know, and I demolish every single one of them. And you know why they give me this reason? Because there's lack of self-trust. They don't trust their bodies, that their bodies are capable to heal, of healing, you know, and this is massive. So body shuts down reproduction function. Endometriosis is associated with uh, fertility. So it's very likely that something happened in your life, which makes your body literally manifest endometriosis, an illness that shuts down all your reproductive function. So maybe you had some bad association with motherhood. Like for example, me living with toxic parents, the last thing I wanted to be a mom, you know, I had failed IVF because in, in my subconscious mind, I was afraid that I'm going to repeat my mother's mistake. And of course, you cannot become mother if you subconsciously don't want to be a mother. This is very, very big thing. Maybe your parents told you uh, being pregnant is very, very bad. Like, you know, your mother uh, told you that, oh, because of you, I have to forget about my plans or, you know, and you took it seriously. You just took it to your subconscious mind and your body manifested disease that prevents you from becoming mother. Or maybe somebody from your family get pregnant very early. Maybe your sister, maybe your mom. And they told you, be very careful. Don't do, you know, the sex is bad. Everything is bad. So you just took it subconsciously so, so, so deep that here you go. Now you ended up with chronic illness but association with growing up and sex it's so common amongst the girl which parents didn't come to conclusion that the children are grow-ups sometimes parents want to keep us small you know and we women are growing up and we having sexual relationships and we do have a families you know, but if your father or mother or whoever still want to keep you as a small baby, then hmm, there will be a lot of bad association with growing up and sex. And that will eventually manifest in the physical world because everything what we hold in our head, we can hold in our hand. It's literally a law, <laughs> a law. And then we are going back to the lack of personal space. This is so crucial, girls, seriously. Let me know in the comment section below if that, uh, you know, makes you, gives you any aha moments or makes you think like, mm, damn it, now I know. Now I know why these endometriosis show up in my life. So 
this is very important and this is based on hypnotherapy uh, i've got masters in hypno hypnotherapy and i'm using a lot of hypnotherapy to help my clients and those two questions two questions <laughs> are very very important because it will show you why you're using this illness as an excuse hmm? listen to me primary gains is everything which you're gaining from keeping this illness and how do you discover answer yourself this question and be very honest with yourself thanks to this illness i don't have to hmm? what's coming up what you don't have to do like when i was doing this exercise i remember uh, i said i don't have to uh, socialize that was the perfect excuse like you know uh, so many times my friends called me you're like home we we getting out blah 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 and i was like oh i'm having a flare-up oh my my endometriosis is playing you know i was using this the same language as you probably do, do use and so many things we don't have to like you know Thanks to my illness, I could uh, go home earlier from my work. I could just say, oh, I had the bad cramp. And they were like, okay, yo, I just go this 20 minutes earlier. So why are you using this illness for? Hmm? Thanks to your illness, you don't have to what? Be honest, okay? If you want to be honest just with yourself, be. If you want to be honest with all of us, because many girls are watching and we are healing here together, let me know in the comment section because there is <laughs> some serious subconscious things. Primary losses. What you're gonna lose if you give up this illness, okay? If I were healthy today, I would have to. What would you have to do if you become healthy today? Hmm? You have to stop playing small because we are hiding behind this illness. It's prevent us from reaching out to the world, going for our dreams, you know, being big and bold. We're just hiding there. And thanks to this illness, if you were healthy tomorrow, you'll be like, Endo is not an excuse anymore. Whew. You will have to get a lot of things done and a lot of fears to, you know, face. And many girls, especially here in the UK, are claiming benefits for endometriosis because it's considered to be a chronic disability. So the money is going to end if you are no longer endogirl. Many endogirls will lose all the communities they built because we are building communities around endometriosis. Yeah, there's so many <laughs> accounts on the Facebook of the endogirls supported by endogirls. And all of a sudden, if you are healthy and not relatable, well, you're going to lose friends. So you just keep this illness. And I'm going to tell you very, very honestly, as long as you, this illness is giving you something, as long as this illness is going to stay in your life, no matter how good, how clean you eat, how much you take care of your hormones, it's going to be the strongest thing. Okay. So take this video very very seriously girl seriously and another thing you are thinking that you are not enough there is not enough of love <laughs> self-love in your life because we've been told that uh, only by doing things and uh, by being productive and giving so much for others we are worth something but you know our worthiness is not based on our productive you know it doesn't matter how many shit you do it, it doesn't make you any less worthy or any less enough it really doesn't so this is the big big problem over here as well and as i mentioned this illness give us permission to rest and slow down sometimes for the first time ever for the first time ever Ah, uh, you see, everything happened for the reason. And even from endometriosis, we can learn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. See me. Sometimes we are using this illness as, see me, I'm here. And 
as I told you, my mom was like narcissist. Like she, she didn't give a shit about me, about my uh, sister w whatsoever. And sometimes we, as a teenagers, we are developing um, disorders in order to be seen because subconsciously we we're thinking like, oh, when I get sick, she surely will see me and surely they will pay attention to me. And surely I will get this love and this time and this affection I crave so much when something bad happened. And then subconsciously bang on something bad happened. But you see, in my case, it didn't work. You know, I was so many times in the hospital, so many times very sick. My mom never show up, not even once. So the see me thing didn't work for me at all. Let me know if it worked for you subconsciously. And yes, girl, you cannot heal the body you hate. So we have to really, really look closely to our, um, you know, healing mindset. I'm doing the course around the healing mindset and it will be launched in February. So if you are interested uh, with all the exercises I'm doing with all my endo girls with I'm working one on one, if you're interested, uh, drop me a DM. I'm going to leave my email address so I can send it to you for pre-order, which is going to be cheapest ever. <laughs> but I think this is very, very important because I see from my clients that sometimes the mindset is the only one, only one thing that prevents us from healing and it shouldn't be this way, okay? So love your inner child, okay? See this small girl inside you. Love her and see her and hear her and nourish her because she wants and adopt her. I literally adopt my inner child, I literally put this adoption certificate. This is one of the many exercises I'm doing with uh, my clients. Uh, we are talking with uh, our wounded child as well. So that's very, very interesting. And that literally changed my life. Okay. Because now I understand how me as a grow up person, how I can give and provide the small girl who is still inside me, everything what I was lacking. And I really believe that if those three pieces comes together, you can finally heal and put this illness into remission naturally. I'm going to link, uh, of course, in the description, all of the videos around the mindset, all of the videos about endometriosis and trauma. So you can uh, check this research, which I was mentioned about, like all the findings, because it's fascinating. And uh, please watch it. Please watch it. And let me know in the comment section below, how was those days for you? Which big aha moments did you have, you know? And does the path look any, any more clear now when you know everything? Be with me tomorrow because tomorrow we are going to put all the puzzles together and I'm going to tell you what to do now. <laughs> because for every problem there's solution and of course for your problem there is solution too. So I'm going to see you tomorrow plus I'm going to do the bonus training video. So it's going to be not five days but six. I will see you tomorrow. I love you so much from deep of my heart to your, you got this girl. You got this! Bye.